now we're moving on to lesson 2.3 on mathematical modeling. This one's going to be kind of short because the idea of mathematical modeling, um, we really, it's one of those things you have to sort of experience it to really understand it. Um, there's not a whole lot of information I can give you uh, via a video that the investigation we'll do in class will be much more clear to understand. Um, what is mathematical modeling? So basically, anytime we use a drawing or uh, graphs or any sort of picture, um, that is mathematical modeling. Also, physically acting out the problem, going through the motions of what is being described to you, that's another way to model the problem. And so in geometry, we've already learned that points, lines, planes, and polygons, and all of those different things we talked about in the first chapter, those are ways of mathematically modeling physical objects. So trying to take, especially when it comes to points, lines, and planes, those are really undefined terms. Just putting a dot on a piece of paper, it models a point. It's not an exact representation because a point is even more um, infinitely smaller than that, but it gives us a way to sort of visualize what is happening. And so with geometry, one of the biggest things that we talk about with our geometry is how can we look at this? The screen doesn't have a lot of information, so that's why I didn't really notice I had to scroll down for it. So just, you know, when we go through this process, it's one of the strategies I tell you when you're solving a problem, especially in geometry, you have to draw it out, you have to act it out, you have to do something besides try to solve it in your head using just numbers. There's a lot more going on with it. Part of our investigation um, that we're going to do in class is we are going to talk about triangular and rectangular numbers. This isn't going to make too much sense for you right now because, again, uh, it's one of those things that when you see it in action, you'll be like, oh, that makes sense. Um, but basically, a triangular number is, if I put the terms in order, and I notice that the change from one term to the next is not constant, but the pattern maybe is somewhat constant in the idea of, I can make the value into an isosceles, or sorry, an equilateral triangle, we call those triangular numbers. So notice that the first term is one, I can make a triangle of just one. Uh, the second term is three, notice I can make it into a nice triangle. The third term was six, then I can make a nice triangle. So this one actually has a pretty easy pattern, similar to our very first lesson, where if I'm adding the next counting number, I'm just adding that to the bottom, that's going to help make my triangular number. If the patterns can be made into something that is length times width, so um, just as an example here, we have square numbers, so 1, 4, 9, 16, so we go through the list of square numbers. Um, I can make them into perfect squares of uh, side times side, but if I had, um, let's say I had a dot that's 1 times 1, if I did 2 times 1, um, if I did 3 times 1, um, if I wanted to add another row to that, I'd say it's 3 times 2, um, and then I wanted to say um, 4 times 3, all right? That pattern is I'm making a rectangle, um, and you know, I could call those rectangular numbers. So it's one strategy we're going to have to use in order to solve um, some of our function rules. So just be on the lookout for it. That's really it when it comes to mathematical modeling. Um, again, draw your pictures, act them out, find those ways to help you solve the problem.